When a batter steps up to the plate for an at-bat, one of two things can happen. He will hit the ball or he will not hit the ball. If he does hit the ball, it will lead to something like a ground out, a fly out, or a base hit. If he does not hit the ball, that means he's been walked, hit by the pitch, or struck out, something like that. We know that the best pitchers, the Roy Hallidays and Randy Johnsons of the world, strike out a lot of hitters and do not walk a lot of hitters. Weaker pitchers do just the opposite. The Mike Molers and Tyler Greens of the world, uh, sorry guys, walk as many guys as they strike out. But when the ball is hit, conventional thinking will tell you that if the ball was thrown by Randy Johnson, it is less likely to result in a base hit than if it was thrown by Tyler Green. Good pitchers are better than weak pitchers, regardless of whether the ball is hit or not. But is that actually true? Let's look at what the numbers have to say about our question. If a batter is to hit a ball thrown by Randy Johnson, is it more likely to be an out than when that batter hits a ball thrown by Tyler Green? Common stats like batting average use all at-bats regardless of the outcome. We need to only consider a part of the at-bats, the ones in which balls are hit into play. And luckily the stat exists for that called batting average on balls in play, or BABIP for short. Because fielders have no opportunity to turn them into outs, home runs are not considered balls hit into play when it comes to BABIP. Our hypothesis, based on what is basically common knowledge over the past hundred years, is that hitters who faced Johnson would have a much lower BABIP than those who faced Green. Thanks to a site called Fangraphs, which tracks every pitcher's BABIP for every season, we can test this out pretty easily. In 1995, Johnson pitched 214 innings. He led the league with a 2.48 ERA, and he won the Cy Young Award. The hitters who he faced had a BABIP of 301. In other words, 30% of the guys who hit a pitch that Johnson threw reach base safely. The other 70% of balls that were hit into play resulted in outs. That same season, Green threw 140 innings and had an ERA of 5.31, which was good for 19th best on the Phillies. The hitters who he faced had a BABIP of 313. That means 31% of the guys who hit a ball thrown by Green reach base safely. Green's BABIP differs by just 12 guys out of 1,000, so his BABIP is virtually the same as Johnson's. Obviously, that's a fluke, right? I just picked two seasons that I knew would work. Okay, let's try it again. In 1998, Johnson split time between the Mariners and the Diamondbacks, but his season-long ERA of 3.28 would have been in the top 10 of either league. Hitters who faced Johnson in 1998 had a BABIP of 320. Green's 1998 ERA was not fantastic at 5.03. This was the last season that Green pitched in the major leagues, but hitters who faced Green in 1998 had a BABIP of 254, almost 7% lower than Johnson's. You are welcome to look at the numbers yourself, but this example is not a fluke. Regardless of whether they are a quote-unquote good or poor pitcher, the typical pitcher BABIP over their career is between 290 and 300. As we have seen with Green and Johnson, most seasons fall outside that range, and there is little relation from one season to the next. Over a career, though, things tend to average out. Take Johnson's career, for example, which lasted over 20 years. He had seasons where his BABIP ranged from 247 in 1990 all the way up to 348 in 2003. That might make it sound like his BABIP increased over his career, but the season after his highest season BABIP in 2003, the following summer it fell back down to 264, which is the second lowest of his career. Johnson's career BABIP ended up at 291. Meanwhile, Green pitched for just four seasons in the 90s, and his career BABIP came out to 289, virtually identical to Johnson's. Since this was first discovered by a guy named Voros McCracken in the late 90s, people have been just as surprised as you probably are right now and as I was when I first learned it. And many people have been trying to disprove it ever since. And while it has not been disproven, numerous studies have shown that pitchers do have some effect on balls in play, albeit less controlled than what we had thought with our original hypothesis. Numerous factors play a role on whether or not a ball hit into play 
will fall in for a hit. The quality of the fielders, the size of the park, remember home runs don't count as balls in play, and the pitcher. Ground ball pitchers do tend to have lower BABIPs. The biggest factor, though, which tends to be frustrating for a lot of people, appears to be luck. Sometimes a batter will hit a line drive, absolutely drill the ball right into the glove of the shortstop. Other times the shortstop is two feet to the left and the ball flies into the gap for a double. The difference between those two scenarios is basically luck. Possibly it's good positioning by the shortstop, but, but from the batter's perspective, it's basically luck. Now, if you or I were to walk out onto the mound during a major league game and start lobbing the ball in there, we would probably have a higher BABIP than 300, but perhaps it's not as high as we would assume. Think about the home run derby. If you were to put a normal defense behind the home run derby pitcher, who's throwing the ball exactly where the batter wants it. The batter would have a very good batting average for sure, but he would still be put out plenty of times. So the next time your favorite pitcher gives up 10 hits in a game, remember, he's probably not bad. More likely, he's just having an unlucky day.